Hi class, this video is all about logical entailment or validity. Your first task is to assess this argument. Read these premises and conclusion, pause your videos, and then decide whether you think this argument is valid. Okay, that was your chance to pause your videos. Now we're gonna talk about the answer. This argument is indeed valid. Remember the definition of validity. The basic definition says, whenever the premises are true, then the conclusion must be true, or the conclusion can't be false. So in order to assess validity, the basic way to do it is to imagine that those premises are actually true. Here's our two premises. Either Pia is happy or both Quinn and Ray are happy. And premise number two, Quinn is not happy. Now let's assume both of those things are true. Well, how could it be that either Pia is happy or Quinn and Ray are happy? Either one, one of those things has to be the case. Either it's Pia or it's the other two. But look at premise number two. If Quinn is not happy, then it can't be the case that both Quinn and Ray are happy. So this thing over here can't possibly be true. But if the premise is true, that means Pia has to be happy. Otherwise, this or sentence wouldn't be true. So if both of these premises are true, then indeed the conclusion must be true. And that's why this argument is valid. So thinking through this hypothetical, validity is a hypothetical property. It says, what if the premises are true? Then something else must be the case. So thinking through in that hypothetical fashion is the best way to assess validity. There's another definition of validity that I've given you, which just says that it's impossible for the following to be the case. The premise is true and the conclusion false. This is not a separate definition though. I call it definition number two, but that's not because this is a different concept. If you think about it, definition number two and definition number one really both come to the exact same thing. So this is two different ways of thinking about the exact same concept. But nonetheless, sometimes thinking about it in terms of definition number two is slightly more helpful than definition number one. Okay, let's try another argument. So pause your videos now and see if you can assess this argument. Decide whether you think it's valid or not. Okay, that was your chance to pause your videos. I really mean you to think through these things. If you, if you don't do the work and actually use your own mind as you're, trying to, as you're watching these videos, then you're just not going to absorb the material. Okay, I gave you a little warning here that this one is harder. Um, so, so don't be afraid, don't, don't be uh, worried if you didn't get it right. Part of the point of giving you a harder problem like this too is to show you that sometimes logic is not totally trivial. When we're trying to illustrate the concept of validity like in the first example, it sometimes is easiest to focus on cases that are quite obvious. And that might give you the impression that this entire course is gonna be obvious all quarter, but logic is actually not like that. Logic can be difficult, complex, and subtle. And this is one of those examples. This argument is actually valid, uh, but how and why it's valid is not nearly as obvious as the first case that we looked at. So let's assess validity. Let's imagine these premises are true again. Let's say Pia is looking at Quinn and Quinn is looking at Neela. Let's say Pia is married, Neela's not married. If we imagine that all those things are true, is it the case that a married person must be looking at an unmarried person? Does this conclusion have to be true? And it's natural to think that's not so because we don't know enough information. The conclusion doesn't have to be true because we don't know anything about Quinn's marital status. Sure, we know P is married and Neil is not, but we don't know enough about Quinn, so how can we assess this conclusion? Ah, but here's where the subtlety comes in. Imagine drawing a picture. We've got three people. Let's say this is Pia over here. Uh, Pia is looking at Quinn, so this is Quinn in the middle, and then Neil is down here at the end. Pia is looking, and this arrow just represents the looking at relation. Pia is looking at Quinn, Quinn's looking at Neela. Pia is married, Quinn's unmarried, or excuse me, Neela is unmarried. So we've encoded all the information from the premises. But look at this extra bit that I've added in here. See, Quinn is either married or unmarried. We don't know which Quinn is, but this has to be the case. And and so sometimes there's information, this isn't explicitly stated in the premises, but it has to be the case nonetheless. This is, a, this is a logical fact, either Quinn is married or not married. So this is still relevant to any argument, not just arguments where this is stated explicitly as a premise. The logical truths have to be true, even if we're not stating them explicitly as premises. So let's imagine that, that Quinn is married. Well, then it is true that a married person is looking at an unmarried person because Quinn is looking at Neela. And what if Quinn is unmarried? Well, then it is true that P is looking at Quinn, so a married person is looking at an unmarried person. You see, this conclusion has to be true no matter what, given this information in here. So sometimes validity isn't so obvious, but this argument actually is valid. What we'll learn throughout this course 
is techniques for proving arguments, even difficult arguments like this, are, are valid um, if it wasn't, uh, if that problem wasn't easy for you. Okay, let's, let's just give a really quick overview of what logic is so then we can explain how the concept of validity arises and why we care about it in this class. Logic really can be uh, thought of is in two different ways. The word is sort of ambiguous, and this can confuse uh, people really easily if we don't point it out explicitly. Because the way that we talk about uh, reasoning in our everyday lives is called logic. Like, what was the logic that I used in that argument? Or what logic is this politician trying to use in order to convince me of something? That's reasoning in our everyday lives. That's like a phenomenon of our life that we want to study. And we call that logic. But at the same time, well, logic is also sort of the field of study. Um, it's, it's a category like physics or biology or economics. It's the theory of that stuff. So logic can mean our study, the, the study of how we reason in our everyday lives. And the word is used to the, for these two things, even though they're very separate things. One of them is this theoretical tool that we use to study the other one. So when we do logic in the second sense, as the object of study, that's what this class is. This class is, is studying how we reason in our everyday lives. The way we're gonna study it, since this is called a formal or symbolic logic class, is we're gonna build these things called logical systems or formal systems. And what those are, are models, they're tools we create, and those tools then help us understand what's going on over here, how we use logic in our everyday lives. And it helps us prove when logic, when we're reasoning uh, badly or prove when we're reasoning properly. Um, so this tool is actually incredibly useful and illuminating. Now, where does validity come in here? But we care about validity and logic because when we reason in our everyday lives, we want to be reasoning validly. When we make an inference, we want somebody to believe, come to believe the conclusion, and that's only going to be worthwhile if we're reasoning validly. Like those premises, that information actually requires the conclusion to be true. So validity is a way of showing how some information follows from other information. So if we accept the premises, we have to accept the conclusion. And because validity matters in our everyday reasoning, that's why it's one, gonna be one of the fundamental tools that we want our uh, formal system to illuminate uh, and help us investigate. Okay, now in order to build those formal systems, we actually make them with three parts. So you're not gonna see a system exactly uh, today, but this is going to give you sort of a placeholder to see where we're going. The formal systems we're going to create have names like Boole and Prop and FOL. Each one of those systems has three components. Every formal system needs a symbolic language or a formal language. It has a semantics to it, which it has to do with the meanings of terms, the meanings of some of those symbols. And it also has this thing called a proof theory, which is uh, a tool for constructing proofs and proving that arguments are valid. So when we start creating systems, we're going to build, it, build them having these three parts. In this video, though, really what we're talking about is the concept of validity, the concept of when some premises or information, some evidence actually entails or requires that some conclusion is true. That's this phenomenon over here. Once we understand that concept a little bit, then we're going to see how to build systems in order to eliminate it. Uh, excuse me, to illuminate it, not eliminate it. All right, um, let's, let's talk about validity more then. So validity is a, an important concept. It's the fundamental concept of logic, but at the same time, it can have some counterintuitive aspects to it. So uh, the weird cases of validity, I think it helps to really understand, get a holistic conception of what validity is if you understand its limiting or unusual cases. So if you read the textbook, you ought to know what the weird cases are. Pause your videos now and see if you can identify all the weird cases from this list. Okay, that was your chance to pause your videos. Let's talk about each of them in turn. Um, contradictory conclusions, is that one of the weird cases of validity? Um, the answer is no. So A is not one of those weird cases. How do you find the weird cases? I've given you a little decision procedure for you. So this is what you can ask yourself. Is it possible for the premises to be true and the conclusion false? This, remember, is definition number two of the concept of validity. So this is illustrating how that version of the concept of validity can be useful. Because if it is possible, then we know the argument is invalid. If this is not possible, then we know the argument is valid. Because remember, definition number two says it's impossible for the premises to be true and the conclusion false. So let's consider this. What if we have an argument with a contradictory conclusion? A contradiction is just something that's necessarily false. 
it's a logical falsehood, a sentence that contradicts itself, like the claim that Quinn is married and unmarried. That can't possibly be true. So what if we had an argument with a conclusion like that? Well, is it possible for the, that argument to have true premises and a false conclusion? Well, yeah, that is possible because that conclusion, a contradictory conclusion is false. So if there were true premises, we would have true premises and a false conclusion. This is possible. The answer is yes. So this is not one of the weird cases of validity. This would be um, possibly invalid. How about circular reasoning? Is it possible for those premises to be true and the conclusion false? Ah, the answer here is no. That's one of the weird cases because circular reasoning happens when your premise is the same as your conclusion or one of your premises is the same as the conclusion. So if in that case, if my conclusion and my premise are the same thing, is it possible for one to be true and the other false? No, if my premise is true, my conclusion has to be true because my premise is my conclusion. That's what circular reasoning is. So this is actually, this is one of the weird cases of validity. Okay, the other two weird cases, hopefully you found them, are D and E, contradictory premises and logically true conclusion. Again, let me explain why C is not one of the weird cases. Because here it is possible for the premises to be true and the conclusion false. After all, logically true premises are gonna be true premises. So any argument with logically true premises and a false conclusion, that would be possible. Um, yes, that's possible. So that would not be one of the weird cases. That would be possibly uh, an invalid example. Okay, let's just quickly look at some examples of each of these, some illustrations. Remember the Tom Cruise argument. Tom Cruise is a Martian, therefore Tom Cruise is a Martian. This might seem really um, like a bizarre argument, but circular reasoning is one of these weird cases of validity because if that premise is true, so is the conclusion. I've reproduced for you down here the two definitions of validity. Sometimes one of these is more helpful to think about and the, than the other one. It just depends upon the case. But really, um, just to repeat what I said before, they, they do come to the exact same thing. How about contradictory premises? This is, this is a very counterintuitive situation. What are contradictory premises? That's either where you have two separate premises and they can't simultaneously be true because they contradict each other, or it could be the case where you have one sentence, which is itself a logical contradiction. Like when I say Quinn is married and unmarried, that's a contradictory sentence. So that would count as a contradictory premise too. Now, here's an example. Every student eats meat every day. Some student never eats meat. Those, those can't both be true. One of those, if one is true, then the other is false. Those contradict each other. So in that case, my premises can never all be true together. Now, why is that a weird case of validity? Because people will look at this argument, you see the conclusion has nothing to do with the premises. The moon is made of green cheese. This is just like a frivolous, random conclusion. How could this possibly follow logically from those premises? Well, here's the answer. Because the premises can't possibly be true. And if that's the case, then the premises can't possibly be true while the conclusion is false because the premises themselves can't possibly be true. So this complex and sentence is never met because the first part of it, the premises can't be true, is never met. That means it is impossible for the premises to be true and the conclusion false. So even though this is a really um, bizarre argument and this shouldn't convince anybody that the mood is made of green cheese, nonetheless, it's valid. So the flaws with this argument are not that it's invalid. Uh, we have to understand other um, grounds for thinking why this argument is bad. If you remember the concept of soundness um, that we've already talked about, there's one way in which you can see why the argument shouldn't convince you. Because any argument that's a weird case of validity in number two with contradictory premises, even though it's valid, it could never be sound. Uh, and soundness is really the gold standard of, uh, of arguments. So, so there's a way of thinking about why this weird case shouldn't really bother you. Okay, let's look at the last one. A logically true conclusion. Logical truths are just sentences that are necessarily true because of the laws of logic. So I'll use the concept of necessarily true and logically true um, interchangeably. So take a sentence like Pia is Pia. I'm gonna just, I'll tell you this is the law of logic. We call this the law of identity. Um, any, everything is the same of it, as itself. Just like, it's like the identity symbol in mathematics. One equals one, you can't possibly make that false. Now. If we put a sentence in our conclusion that's a law of logic like that, like Pia is Pia, that's automatically going to be a valid argument no matter what you put up here in the premises. And that might seem weird because everyone loves logic. That doesn't have anything to do with whether Pia is Pia. You know, this is about logic, this is about Pia. Why is that a valid argument? Well, think about the definitions again. Is it possible to make the premises true and the conclusion false? No, it's not possible because logical truths can't possibly be false. They're always true. 
And what that means is it's impossible. Definition number two is fulfilled. It's impossible for the premises to be true and the conclusion false because it's impossible for the conclusion to be false. And that means that this is one of those weird cases of validity. Now, one final note um, that, that might be confusing for you. I, in the textbook, we say that, that the concept of validity is a structural relation between the premises and the conclusion. And you might think, well, that's weird because there's no relation between these premises and this conclusion. Or if you think about the, the moon made of green cheese case, there's, uh, there's no relation between these premises and this conclusion. So how can these be validity if validity is about that kind of structural relation? Well, here's the answer. When I say that validity is a structural relation between the premises and the conclusion, I'm, I'm speaking just, just very slightly inaccurately. Technically, what I want to say is validity is a structural property of arguments. Okay, that is, the, that is the truth. That is the fact. And almost always, that structural property of arguments is, arises because of the relation between the premises and the conclusion. Like, think about the Tom Cruise Martian case. There's a relation between the premises and this conclusion. It's, it's the identity relation. The premise is the conclusion. And that relationship between the two is what guarantees that argument is valid. So almost all cases of validity have to do with that relation, a structural connection between the premises and the conclusion. But nonetheless, there are two limiting cases. The structural properties of arguments that are valid ones, sometimes the premises alone have a certain kind of structure that guarantees the argument is valid. And that's the contradictory premises case. The structural fact about these premises alone, the fact that they're contradictory, means the argument is valid. And then the other weird case is that here all the structure is in the conclusion. Sometimes the structural fact about arguments is just a structural fact about the conclusion alone is enough to make the argument valid. Namely, when the conclusion is logically true, that structure of the conclusion guarantees the argument is valid nonetheless. So validity is always a structural fact about arguments. Usually it's a structural relation between the premises and the conclusion. But every once in a while, in some weird cases, it's just a structural fact about premises. And in the, another weird case, it's a structural fact about the conclusion. Okay, thanks.